This talk is aimed at conflicts between individuals, not at conflicts about big questions like gay marriage or what hymnal should we use. We'll talk about when one of us feels that we have been poorly treated by another of us. This does happen here, and it tears at the fabric of our community. This topic has three parts, making, minding, and mending community. Some of the ideas I talk about come from my experience as a conflict manager in a high school, uh, working with conflict managers. The students were the conflict managers. I was the advisor and witness. Thank you. And some of these ideas come from Linden Co-housing Community in Madison, Wisconsin. My daughter lives in that community. Linden considers a conflict is a natural part of community. It will happen. It needs to be dealt with. Accepting conflict as a natural part of community is kind of a new idea to me. I thought, we should just all get along. It doesn't work like that. We do have conflicts with one another. So Linden has developed their processes of conflict resolution over several years of living in close quarters, and they continue to develop and refine their processes. As background for you, each family in Linden has their own apartment, and then they have several common spaces, a commercial kitchen and a dining room and lounges. And so they're, they're apart in their own place and together as soon as you walk out the door of your apartment. Um, conflicts at Linden come under the responsibility of a committee called 3MC, and those three Ms are making, minding, and mending, and the C is for community. So we'll take these three Ms one at a time. The first M is making community. The first step in making community is building a culture of trust through intentional practices that help people get to know and understand one another. That way, when there's conflict, the people involved aren't, aren't talking to strangers, they're talking to people that they know well and care about. These practices include community activities, and we already have many of these, which we will identify later this morning. We'll also brainstorm ways that we could have fun together. Not everyone all at once necessarily, but those who are interested in a particular activity go off together to do that thing. Fun is important. But before we do that, I'll talk about some other aspects of building community. Building a culture of trust includes defining and revisiting our group's shared values and agreements. At Linden, shared values, which have taken some years to define, are actually painted on the wall of the, of the dining room. So they're always there. People see them every time they eat together, which is often. I don't know that we have discussed our shared values. We do have some shared agreements. We have our, our um, what do you call the thing that we sign? Covenant. Covenant. Our co we have our covenant. We have, when you join the church, you make certain promises. But that's about as far as we go, as far as I know, is in terms of shared agreements. When people let Lyndon feel hurt or have any other conflict with another member of commu the community that is not easily resolved, they can contact someone on the 3MC committee. The committee meets to decide how to proceed. As every situation is unique, the committee may wish to investigate further and talk to all parties involved. They may decide they are able to deal with the parties informally, or they may begin the formal conflict resolution process. The second M is minding community, and that means paying attention to the needs of the community for peaceful relationships and includes a formal conflict resolution process. When someone comes to the committee about a conflict, the committee offers support to clarify and assess the situation. The individual in conflict is encouraged to take time for personal reflection to determine if the matter is something they can solve on their own or do they need some help to, to resolve it. The committee provides various resources such as questions for them to consider, suggestions, articles, podcasts, even referrals to local counselors or therapists if the person wishes to talk to someone outside the community. So after this per period of reflection, the person may wish to take the matter forward to a guided conflict resolution process. The process I saw used in the high school was very effective. First, both parties to a conflict had to agree to enter the process. After the process was explained and they agreed to participate, a meeting was held with the people in conflict, the conflict manager who directed the process, and a witness. The parties agreed to listen without interrupting, knowing that they would also have a turn to be heard. This is key to the whole thing. 
Each person needed a chance to speak without fear of being shouted over. The conflict manager asked one person to speak. The conflict manager paraphrased each point to be sure they understood. Then the other person spoke and the conflict manager paraphrased again. They kept on taking turns until the problem was all out in the open. Then the conflict manager asked them if they were ready to talk to each other. The goal was to have a formal plan to end the conflict. This plan was revisited with all parties at a later date to see if the conflict was resolved. If it wasn't resolved, they went through the process again. The third M is mending community. Conflicts between individuals often spill over and affects others in the community. Finding the balance between privacy, confidentiality, and the needs of the community to be informed is delicate. When people outside the process know something is going on, we don't like being left guessing or relying on gossip for information. This needs to be addressed as part of the conflict resolution process. So those are the three M's, making, mending, and minding community. Okay, so we're gonna talk about making community. And I'm gonna ask you to work some of the people around you. The f you'll have two tasks. The first task is to name what we are already doing to make our church community building a culture of trust through activities that help people get to know and understand one another. I'm gonna give you some post-it notes. So make little groups, please. Your next task is to name or write down several fun activities that you would be willing to participate in with others in our community. What ideas do you have for just plain having fun together? So new ideas. New ideas. More ways to have fun together. And so I will post your ideas one way or another yeah. and we'll see what develops. You have another one? That's just fine. Yeah. Uh, we're going to enter a period of reflection and then response.